Friends, a warm welcome to the webinar on AI Powered Video Analytics for Smart City Surveillance, where we explore how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the way we keep our cities safe and smart. I'm Zada, your host for today, and I'm excited to embark on a journey into the world of AI powered smart city surveillance with all of you. Today, we have a dynamic lineup of speakers who will share their insights on smart city surveillance. First up, we will hear from Mr. Mike Lewis, Head Product Marketing Strategy, giving us insights into the strategic side of things. Following that, Mr. Prashant Obdoy, our Director Sales for South Media, will dive into the real world applications and market dynamics. Before we dive in, I want to remind you to engage with us throughout the webinar. You will use the chat box to ask questions and connect with our speakers. You can interact with us, so make the most of it. Now, without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker, Mr. Mike Lewis, Head of Product Marketing Strategy. He brings a wealth of technical expertise to the table. With a robust background in surveillance solutions, he has been the forefront of developing cutting edge technologies that redefine the way we approach securities in our cities. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Mike Lewis. Mr. Mike, the venue is all yours. Okay, thank you very, very much for that. Um, hello, everybody, and uh, I hope you're having a fabulous day, whatever time it is. Um, I'm here at our head office in London, and um, the time here is uh, yeah, around about 15 minutes past 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's a very, very uh, lovely sunny day here. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope we've got some exciting things to tell you. And uh, let's get on and talk about smart city surveillance. So the first part is for me to tell you about some of the technology. And then my colleague Prashant is going to tell you about some of the ways that we've actually developed and deployed these into various cities around the world. So anyway, smart city surveillance. CCTV cameras obviously are used predominantly for security, but a smart city is a, about a lot more than simply security. It's about um, understanding the um, developing situations, uh, crowd management, traffic management, um, the environment, keeping the city a very, very pleasant place for the inhabitants, and generally a nice place to be. So, when we look at the various trends that have um, taken place over the last five or five or ten years, in actual fact, when we look at smart cities, we talk about things like AI or artificial intelligence. We talk about machine learning. Now, in, in surveillance, what this basically means is the ability to be able to use clever algorithms and also the ability for devices to teach themselves what is and what isn't important. We'll come on to this in a little bit more um, detail a little bit later on. We also are very aware these days of um, the cloud and how important cloud storage and analytics in the cloud is. Um, obviously, with these cameras capturing a lot of data, a lot of footage, it's important that the cloud is number one, secure, and number two, um, uh, correct capacity to be able to store that footage. So when we talk about the cloud, the alternative to the cloud could be edge. So edge recording and edge processing is a very big part of our future. And a lot of our products are being designed around having the analytics actually in the camera rather than at the core or in the cloud. So again, we're going to touch on some of this. Um, facial recognition, this is a topic of conversation that has been taking place over many, many, many years. And obviously, as we go forwards in terms of technology, it makes sense that we can get better and better and better at it. 
Facial recognition gives us the ability to be able to not only recognize someone, but also the ability to be able to backtrack and find where that person actually came from, maybe following a particular route that they took. So facial recognition is, uh, is key. However, we need, to, we need to consciously be aware of people's rights so we cannot overstep the mark. Oops, sorry, gone the wrong way. Okay. Um, so in terms of the key technologies that we've just talked about, some of the things that are important are things like Internet of the Things, which doesn't just relate to cameras. It relates to all kinds of devices that could form part of the smart city infrastructure. Sensing devices, temperature devices, wind devices, all of these can help us build a better picture towards what is happening in our smart cities and give us the ability to be able to manage it better. Obviously, AI, artificial intelligence, with all of the analytics that go around that data piece, gives us the ability to be able to discover patterns so we can actually understand the particular patterns or routes or um, uh, modes that people follow and also the ability to be able to predict certain things. So what this translates to into in, in the real world is better threat analysis. So the ability to be able to understand, is there the potential for a threat? And then deal with that potential before it becomes a real threat. Um, the ability to be able to proactively take in uh, security measures, um, and to be able to work out any sort of valuable insights in towards urban planning and things like that. Let me just put my phone on mute because it keeps going off. Um, it's very important, as I say, to be able to manage the data that we collect. So therefore, we need to be able to manage it and also secure it so that it's not open to abuse. And also, as you may be aware, Norden being a connectivity and communication company, it's important that that connectivity, the infrastructure, is um, yeah, in, intrinsically designed to be able to give us the exact amount of data throughput that we require. So again, as a, as a total solution, not only can we provide the the cameras, but we can also provide all of the infrastructure that's required to make a smart city. So the benefits of having um, surveillance in a smart city, number one, obviously the first, the top priority has got to be law and order. So the ability to be able to understand, is there a situation and then deal with that situation? And Closely linked to that is public safety. So if we have a, a, a scenario where public safety is at risk, then the quicker that we can deal with that, the better. Um, all of this equals happier people, happier citizens, um, happier visitors. It's obviously important to remember that people visiting a particular area need to feel safe. So a big part of smart cities is safety and security. Again, couple the AI with facial recognition, for instance, and a few of the other things that we're going to show shortly, gives us the ability to be able to detect and maybe even prevent crimes before they happen. But if, say, for instance, we have a crime and we need to understand maybe how that crime was committed, having that facial recognition um, data set gives us the ability to be able to effectively rewind um, the live story and be able to track back a person on the route that they took. Um, a big part of smart cities has got to be intelligent traffic management. The ability to be able to understand, is the traffic doing something that it potentially shouldn't do? Or is it causing a risk to safety um, by doing what it's doing? So that intelligent traffic management is a massive piece um, in the use of surveillance technologies for um, traffic management. 
Um, when you're designing a city, when you're designing a smart city, it's very, very important to be able to keep track of how the various utilities are running in that city. So one of the things that um, surveillance can do is it can help us keep track of the various um, constituent parts of that, that maintenance piece. Things like um, uh, roadworks, things like um, accidents, things like um, animals, all of these things can affect the smooth running of uh, the roadways in a smart city. So being totally aware in real time of these events can allow us to deal with them and maybe come up with instant on the spot um, contingency plans. And, and also another thing which is uh, a big issue to a lot of uh, cities throughout the world is vandalism. So therefore, we have AI modules, for instance, that can determine if someone is causing uh, litter by discarding garbage in the street, or for instance, um, vandalism with um, spray painting. So anything like this can cause disruption and civil unrest. So the, the whole plan of a smart city surveillance system is to try and deal with these things as they happen live rather than after the fact. So one of the things that we're going to look at now is we're going to look at a smart city and we're going to drill down into each of the individual um, areas that surveillance can actually help us with um, in terms of um, yeah, the various aspects, the various corners of the city. So let's take a close look at general city surveillance, for instance. We're going to be looking at the type of cameras that we would use, the benefits, um, and also um, how potentially these could be deployed. Um, we're then going to be looking at smart uh, city planning and also the traffic management. Public safety, which, as I say, is a very, very big key part of um, smart cities. Um, crowd management, how we deal with the disbursement and also the creation of crowds and, and how that can actually affect a city. Law enforcement, as I say, is a very, very big part of any surveillance system and uh, smart cities are no different. And also uh, retail, so how smart surveillance can benefit in a retail environment. So first of all, general city surveillance. So it makes sense that when we have overview uh, monitoring and recording um, of open areas in the, the general city, we have to use cameras that are designed to do the job. So the kind of cameras that we normally would deploy in a, um, a general surveillance area, they would have to be high definition, okay? So um, we're talking about multiple millions of pixels of, of uh, cameras. Um, we would employ normally dome cameras and also uh, bullet cameras or, or box cameras in housings. The benefits here is they can have um, a, longer, a longer focal length uh, range. They can also benefit from a uh, wide dynamic uh, range and also the ability to be able to see very, very clear images in both colour and also black and white, even in really, really uh, low light areas. Um, and obviously, from a monitoring point of view, all of these cameras need to be brought back to a central monitoring um, room or rooms. Uh, for live viewing and also for playback of, of recorded footage. Um, it's also important to fortify these fixed cameras, which will focus on particular interesting areas, such as road junctions or uh, particular areas of interest. It's important to fortify those with cameras that can actually move. 
So a fully functional pan, tilt and zoom camera gives us the ability to be able to track people around the city um, kind of covertly, um, but it does give us that, that instant appreciation of what's actually going on um, live on the ground without having to be there. Um, so when we're looking at traffic management, for instance, again, we could be using box cameras or bullet cameras, but again, some of the cameras have very, very special abilities um, in terms of integrated automatic number plate recognition, and also sometimes um, the ability to be able to see um, very, very sharp images in low light. and with the ability to have infrared, so either integrated or external infrared um, lights that are then picked up by the cameras using um, using special lenses. Um, so yeah, typically these cameras tend to be fixed. Sometimes they can be backed up with PTZ cameras, but most of these are fixed on particular fields of view. Um, public safety is a big concern in a smart city. So again, it's really important to have not only fixed cameras, maybe loaded with facial recognition software, also the addition of pan, tilt and zoom cameras to be able to follow people around, maybe automatically as well, based on facial recognition. And in addition to that, we also see at this stage, the implementation of body-worn cameras as well. So the ability to have um, body cams on people that are public servants, maybe, that are designed or, or designated to have contact with the public. And what we can do with these body cams using um, cellular technology, 4G, 5G, or even Wi-Fi, is we can connect direct live back to a central monitoring station. So, for instance, if there is a particular event occurring, then the monitoring station can actually see and hear through the body cam live. Uh, obviously, this gives a huge advantage in terms of intelligence. It also gives a massive advantage in terms of situational awareness because we, we have got eyes on the ground as a first responder. Plus, also from a safety point of view, um, the wearer of the body cam, which is uh, GPS enabled, so we can actually see the exact location of that wearer. So if we need to send support to that wearer, then we can do that without even needing to speak to them. We can actually see where they are on a real time um, up to the date map. And even we've got the ability to be able to talk to the person and they can talk back to us um, using uh, either Bluetooth or, or using the cellular technology. So all of this is capable using the body cams that I've uh, suggested. Here in the UK, for instance, not only do we see the police and the traffic wardens wearing body cams, we also now see private enterprises such as pubs, and restaurants and retail outlets also wearing body cams because it's a proven fact that they act as a deterrent. So where you've got a situation that may become uh, confrontational, then it's proven that having that body cam disperses that or dispels that ability or desire to cause um, an incident. So they can be a very, very good deterrent as well. Crowd management is a very important part of, um, of smart city uh, control in the way that we need to be aware if there is a situation arising that we need to deal with. So in part of the algorithms employed in our um, system, we can actually detect a crowd so if a, if a number of people moving together um, exceeds a certain size, then the system can automatically alert us 
if uh, that happens, so we can actually have our attention attracted to it and then deal with it. And again, fixed cameras um, and also PTZ cameras are used in, in this kind of scenario. So law enforcement, again, obviously is a very, very big part of smart cities. Um, having um, law enforcement officers on the ground, uh, number one, having cameras monitoring those uh, law enforcement officers gives them added support and added security. In addition to the use of body cams, again, as I've just described. Retail obviously is, uh, is key because when we go shopping, we need to feel safe. And also the shop owners need to feel protected in terms of theft or riots or raids. So all of these things, which are unfortunately part of everyday life, um, all of these things need to be planned for. So having fixed cameras and also the deployment of body cameras, like I've described, um, maybe having local monitoring stations within the store. Some of the malls, some of the big department stores have their own security. And having pan tilt and zoom cameras as well to be able to follow people around the store if we believe that they are uh, there to commit a crime. And maybe also temperature detection cameras if we um, are in a, a position where we need to start looking at the, the spread of disease again. Again, it's just a, another area that we can actually deal with. So part of what I've discussed already is hardware. So part of it is cameras. Part of it is also software. So when we look at the software side, that software could exist either on a server somewhere at the core, or it could exist in the cloud, or equally, it could exist on the edge inside the actual camera itself. Having it inside the camera gives us various benefits. Number one, it means that we absolutely reduce latency because we haven't got to send all of that footage back to the core. We can actually do a lot of the hard work at, inside the camera and then only send the information that we need back to the core. Um, also, the ability to be able to, um, let's say, for instance, take a uh, when we're looking at automatic number plate recognition, for instance, we can actually do all of that automatic number plate recognition in the camera itself. So there's various different ways that we can do analytics. One of those is in software, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more uh, in detail about that now. Um, but the whole key of analytics is to work for us and to make our jobs easier, basically. So it's very, very costly to have guards sat watching screens 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So having software that can basically watch those cameras for us and only alert us when something happens, that has a huge cost saving. Plus also, as humans, we've got a very limited span of attention. So having software to watch it and alert us when something happens is a lot more efficient and effective. So let's have a look at what I mean by software. So we've got various analytics modules that can do all of these things and a load more as well. These are just a few examples. So we can detect if an object disappears or we can de detect if an object is left behind. As I say, we can look at crowd monitoring. We can look at um, if a person's not wearing a particular um, PPE. So hard hat, uh, boots, gloves, high visibility waistcoat, or even uh, masks. We can use AI, artificial intelligence. We can use that for monitoring for parking spaces or for understanding is there a fire or smoke. We can even use it to detect if someone has gone too far over a junction. Uh, 
So let's have a look at some of the exciting ways that we can use this. So, for instance, this is real-time CCTV footage that was recorded in a metro station. You can see here the two um, people talking. They are about to walk off, and when they do, the AI will work out that they've left a bag. Now, what we've actually done is we've drawn a particular area in green, and we've said if at any time, if anybody leaves any luggage in this area, then alert us. And what that does is it gives us absolutely instant feedback that this has happened. So we can go and find the people before they've exited the train station or the airport, and then we can uh, understand, did they leave it there on purpose or was it an accident? So we don't have to clear the whole airport or train station just because somebody has accidentally left a bag behind. Here we've got um, an example of somebody walking into a sterile area where they shouldn't be. So straight away, the analytics module knows that this is a human. It doesn't react if it's a dog or a hare or a horse, just humans. And it can understand, is that person in that area? And if they are, then alert us. It can also be set up to only alert us if that person is in the area for a certain amount of time, or if they stop moving, for instance. So all of these are ways that we can deploy an intelligent system into a city to basically make it a smart city. So here we've got just another example of how we can use the system to count people. This is a particular camera that is pointing obviously straight down over a doorway and it can work out whether it's one person, two people, five people, because the algorithms are specifically looking for heads. And then obviously it can tell you how many people are in the building. So this is a, a mode that I like to refer to as museum mode because you can very easily appreciate that if this was in a museum focused on an uh, expensive oil painting or an object, if that object moves or disappears, then straight away the system can alert us and then we can deal with it. <coughs> Excuse me. So straight away, the system is recognizing that that object is no longer there. All of what I'm showing you is basically in an attempt to deal with a problem as it happens, rather than to go back the next day and try and understand what happened, who did it. Now, here we've got an interesting clip. This is obviously in the desert somewhere. And this is a virtual tripwire. So that red line is the, the border crossing, if you like. And again, using analytics, we can determine, was it a human or was it a camel? If it's a camel, don't do it. If it's a human, then alert us. So this is using smart analytics, not only to put virtual tripwires, but also to understand what is the actual subject. And again, what you can see in this particular um, clip is the use of thermal technology. So this could be, a, um, it could be infrared or it could even be thermal using heat detection. So all of these solutions are available to us to exploit different scenarios as required. Uh, here we've got another example. A, a particular camera, for instance, is actually set up to just monitor for security at a gas station. However, because we've loaded a particular module on that, that particular camera, this camera here, for instance, not only is doing security monitoring, but it's also alerting if it detects a fire. So what you can see here is a, a number of mopeds queuing up to fill with gas. And then for whatever reason, a fire is created. As you can probably appreciate, we didn't stage this. This is real life. Um, and in a second, you'll see. OK, so somehow a fire has started. And straight away, within a second or two, the system is now alerting that there is a fire. 
thus giving you the chance to deal with the fire before the fire spreads and burns down the whole gas station. So this is smart analytics for you, working for our benefit. OK, so here we've got, again, some real life footage. Um, this is in a hospital and we've got a person that, for whatever reason, has collapsed. So the analytics can detect the movements of this person and then establish is this person what we call what we call collapsed if so create an alert so you can probably imagine if you've got a lone worker situation where a person is in a particular area on their own and a camera monitoring that area detects that that person is collapsed then straight away it can alert us Okay, this is one thing that I talked about when we're talking about keeping a smart city safe and clean, garbage disposal. So the moped has just driven up there, dropped the bag, and the system has instantly alerted us that there is, um, there is some garbage. So we've looked at those different scenarios. So let's now take a very close look at the intelligent traffic management solutions that we offer. Basically, we could break these down into four areas. Highways, intelligent highway traffic event detection system. That's a lot of words, isn't it? But basically, we're looking at understanding from an intelligent point of view the, the, the traffic yeah, on a highway and then alerting us if there are any problems. Then we can look at junctions and again, we can define a set of rules around junctions. Then we can look at pedestrian crossings, for instance, and again, set a set of rules around them. And fourth, we can look at parking violations. So all of these modules go towards creating smoother traffic flow and also the ability for a, a city to work uh, in a more cohesive way and a more pleasant way. So let's take a look at the first one. What can we do, or what do we look at in terms of intelligent highway traffic event detection? So first of all, speed. So there's two ways that you can do, well, there's multiple ways you can do speed detection. However, one of them is spot speed detection, okay? So this is the instant speed that that vehicle is doing. The alternative being average speed, okay? So this is based around time and distance. So the distance between two known points and the time that it takes an object to travel that distance can very quickly be worked out to be the average speed. So we've got systems that can do both of these. Also, very, very important is um, the visible violation event detection. So for instance, is someone wearing a seatbelt? Are they on the phone? Also, we need to enforce people going the wrong way up a street and also parking violations. Also, number plate detection and number plate recognition. As I say, people using mobile phones, fire and smoke detection, we've looked at that, and also lane discipline. Now, this also includes, for instance, lanes that are supposed to be closed that people still use. In the UK, for instance, we have deployed smart motorways, but when people use lanes that they shouldn't be using, that causes problems. And probably not such a problem in some countries, but other countries where you're supposed to use a helmet, we've got the abilities to be able to detect that. And with, with the speed, we use 4D radar and also the, the intelligence around the, uh, the detection of the speed. So let's just take a look at some of the examples here. So using the same CCTV cameras that we've deployed for crowd control and public safety and security, we can also run modules on them that will give us the ability to do the smart traffic uh, detection. So, for instance, 
different cameras pointing in different directions can see different things. So one of the cameras here uh, is seeing that somebody has crossed the line on a stop junction. Uh, it may be that they're actually parked on the crossing for pedestrians. So using the various cameras that we've already deployed with additional modules installed gives us the ability to be able to do smart junction detection. Um, also, for instance, uh, traffic lights. So red light violations, um, talked about automatic number plate recognition, driving without helmets, fire and smoke, lane discipline. All of these are very, very similar, especially when you talk about traffic. So again, when we deploy cameras that have a bigger field of view and high resolution, we've got the ability to use those cameras for multiple things. So for instance, not only protecting uh, public safety and security and things like that, but also we can actually have the camera that is um, covering also the pedestrian crossing automatically controlling the lights. So for instance, in this particular scenario, the camera can see that there are people stood at the pedestrian crossing. It can also see if there is a big queue of cars. And then the intelligence behind switching the lights over is made based on those series of judgments. Parking violation, again, we can use um, smart, intelligent cameras with pan, tilt and zoom abilities to be able to cover a long street and log the number plates and the time and the date that they arrived and when they left. And if they overstayed their ticket, then we can automatically issue the fine. So for instance, here's some examples. So using a high resolution camera, we've got the ability to number one, have a, while, uh, a wider field of view. And that wider field of view gives us better situational awareness. But because it's high resolution, we've not only got the ability to be able to understand what the vehicle was, what the number plate was, and do that automatic number plate recognition piece, but also to be able to zoom in on the person in the car to understand are they wearing a seatbelt, are they on the phone, all kinds of things across multiple lanes. So we don't need one camera per lane. We can do multiple lanes with one camera. And even for instance, at night. So nighttime images are always a challenge because you have issues with back backlight and focusing and infrared and all kinds of things like this. However, using a different type of technology, which is a, a, a dual infrared with, with a pulse, what we can actually do is take effectively two images or multiple images and then actually compare them. So what you'll see here is a kind of an underexposed image and then an overexposed image, which can actually then aggregated bring together bring together images that are a lot more useful, like these, for instance. So this is, yeah, th this is this is new technology. What we're doing here, for instance, this is the um, yeah, this, this is giving you an example of the various violations that the cameras can detect. So no helmet, people not wearing their seatbelts, people on the mobile phones, all kinds of different stuff. And you can do it, as I say, multiple instances across different lanes. Here we've got another example. This is using spot speed detection. So you'll see that all of the vehicles are, are logged not only with their number plate recognition, but also with the, the speed. There's so many things that we can do with this. We can do vehicle classification um, so that you can actually understand how many vans or lorries or mopeds or whatever are actually going up the street. Here, for instance, this is, uh, this is uh, an interesting situation where you've got a camera in a car that is just driving around a car park taking number plates but again it's important from different parts of the world we have different number lettering sequences and formats of number plates and colors so it's important that we can do all of these different um, scenarios so here's an example in in saudi when it comes to uh, classification for instance here's um 
an example. Um, again, you've got two lines of, or two lanes of traffic, two directions. But what you can actually see here, and, and you wouldn't normally see these figures that are on the screen, they're, they're just there for example. But this is the confidence level of the system based on what it thinks that vehicle is. So the confidence level of the truck was 92%. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a bus at confidence level 90%. Um, we've got a tanker truck at 95%, um, a car at 94%. So this is a way of actually saying to you, this is how confident the system is that that car is a car and not a truck. This has all sorts of benefits in terms of toll charges, for instance, in terms of um, the type of road, the type of lanes that can be used for those type of vehicles. So, um, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's that's really towards the end of my presentation. I hope you found it interesting. I think this technology is going to grow and grow and grow because it will help us um, really act and, and uh, live more more pleasantly and follow the rules as well so there you go last slide from me i'm going to hand it over to my uh, my colleague prashant in a second uh, i'd just like to say thank you very much for your time i will be around until the end which is where we'll be able to answer any questions um but yeah for now i'm going to hand it over to prashant yeah hi mike thank you very much uh, good afternoon all i think mike has given us uh, in detail, uh, a lot of uh, overview about the whole of technology, what we have in terms of cameras, in terms of software, the capability which could be on the edge, which could be on the server-based analytics and what all it can combine and do that. However, uh, I would be taking what we have already done, few case studies as to what we have already implemented in various, in different regions. Uh, primarily, I'm covering the Southeast Asia and India case studies. Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. I'm based out of Delhi. And as Mike said, it's a great sunny morning there in London. And it's a Delhi, it's a cold evening in Delhi. So different weathers. So let's move forward on the case studies. The first one is the uh, smart city the la city which is uh, if you, if we see it is one of the largest city in the central highland region of vietnam and just to give you the overview it is one of the most popular destinations in vietnam and this particular uh, whole plan was inaugurated in the year 2018 to do the smart city pilot and in this, the, obviously, the most important thing, as most of the smart cities has, is the law enforcement, the traffic and security in the city, and obviously, automizing a lot of things around uh, the traffic thing. Here, the challenges, I would not say challenges, but yes, partial challenges, and in terms of what was to be achieved, rather, I would say, instead of challenges, the, the local authorities wanted us thing where command center can be created where they can take care of uh, the law and order and expected occurrences or emergency situations they can take care from the control center and these cameras were to be connected all in the command center thereby alerting or even some cases forecasting the problems especially in terms of traffic's analysis the uh, forecasting the problem and accordingly the response plan can be done manual or automatic These were the solutions which were implemented. The PTZ camera of with 25x zoom and the fixed lens cameras were given and with the help of our uh, integrator and there the VMS was used with VMS, Milestone VMS. We successfully integrated the efficient video management system across the city. Uh, just a photograph of that particular sit, city center, command center. The results, obviously, whatever they wanted to achieve, it was already achieved 
now using the aut automation of the whole traffic system and automatic ticket generation also in fact has been done the next one moving to the social surveillance project in vietnam uh, this was this is a pretty big installation in vnpt which is one of the biggest telecom com corporation in vietnam uh, with their strenuous effort they have been able to develop multiple solutions across provinces and cities again the thing was to have a proper surveillance system as the name itself suggests that it is a social survey uh, uh, social surveillance project the whole uh, thing was to have efficient surveillance system which could track and record the instances and a user friendly approach was required because specifically when we say social surveillance it could have different meanings for different people the challenges which came were the diversified needs and the utmost protection of data specifically and covering it the use of ease of use which has to be taken care of there uh today we have already completed an 2000 plus cameras out of which 1700 are fixed cameras and 300 pantled zoom cameras which have been installed and running for more than 2 years rather 3 years now this is some photographs of the locations which have been covered using these cameras again here the overall thing of bringing the master system integrator together and vms you know, from milestone x prototype the cameras were installed on time without much hassle because okay probably you would be hearing a lot of other vms and etc name which have been installed in different projects just to emphasize on the point that since all our cameras are already multiple on wave profiles they support multiple on wave profiles so we can integrate with any third party vms or any third party software anything any software rather which supports the on wave profiles another thing another city which has been done is tene city this is in southeastern vietnam and uh, this has a bigger farmland and the aim was to compile and upload key monitoring administering that those data is around those locations and having a intelligent monitoring and administrating system across the whole province so there are some specialized cameras in the traffic related cameras the fixed cameras ptz which have been put here because as as we say the it was a farmland so there was safety risk of poor visibility because you know when it is too much of a open area the foggy conditions or the misty conditions and those kind of things and confusing road layouts because it more of farmland so those kind of challenges the environmental challenges were there and there were frequent incidents of this uh so these were the certain challenges which were to be overcome and this covers today like as you can see in the screen it is today more than 375 plus cameras and additional specific 200 plus cameras have been given for specific infrastructure and traffic apart from the general surveillance again some pictures you could see the kind of a uh, heavy the big trees around and those kind of areas around so you have to decide very clearly where you want to position your camera so that the field of view is fine the so certain things this knowledge and in terms of uh, this informed decision making in terms of as why i was saying where to put it the field of view which camera to be put at which place finally overall solution uh, went off well and today the results are being delivered for that particular province moving on to some cities in india varanasi smart city as we know there were few smart cities declared by or rather 100 smart cities declared by government of india way back in 2015 though we entered into the space uh, slightly late but we have been able to do few of them varanasi being the prime minister's our prime minister's india's prime minister's constituency itself was pretty repetitive for us and it was a very important installation for us 
लॉट ऑफ इंडियंस नो बट दिस इज दिस सिटी हैज अ लॉट ऑफ कल्चरल एंड हिस्टोरिकल वैल्यू एज वेल तो देयर दिस वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड लार्ज इंस्टॉलेशन वेयर वी हैव पुट मोर देन तो रिक्वायरमेंट्स वो because as i said requirements was the whole municipality for effective implementation for surveillance as well as the traffic thing the tan city coverage the system which is already there were few uh, systems which was already running the one challenge was to adapting to that system and integrating with the current system which they have already have today we have delivered more than 2500 cameras for the general surveillance face recognition traffic related applications along with as uh, mike was telling ki being a not only a surveillance company but infrastructure company we have supplied more than 500 kilometers of ofc covering the pan city along with the whole solution on the fiber the whole backbone of the city is also running on northern infrastructure project products and coupled with that a strong health management software which could give the proactive alerts and which could give the real time health of the overall system has been implemented thereby resulting in an effective administration of these products also this is just a photograph of the command control center from varanasi so few things which they have achieved obviously it is more of english i would not like to repeat it but for sure the administration has been able to efficiently do and the numbers have already come out where the number of incidents in terms of traffic violation have come down over past 3 years the police has been able to maintain the law and order and proactively have been able to catch a lot of offenders using these cameras moving on to the next city uh, the noida smart city project noida is a town which which is uh, in the neighborhood of delhi which is our capital in india and here again this was primarily a traffic driven project this was not for general surveillance this project was known itself as iestms which is a traffic management system for noida and the primary requirement was there were frequent traffic jams and frequent violations specifically in terms of red light jumping and all that those were very frequent so that was the requirement to maintain the traffic sanity as well as uh, the traffic jam issue should be taken care of these were the primary requirements from the projects and implementing this and obviously automated ticketing generating system so that the manual intervention is not there in terms of when we are talking about cutting the chalans for the offenders again the same thing was there here first being a pretty big city and a lot of companies around we need to decide which was the high traffic flow area and where congestion happens and which locations are to be done obviously this was finally decided by the authority but along with the system msi uh, we were part of that in terms of changing few locations which we thought may not be of that much use the others could have been better this comprises of the anpr speed violation detection and evidence camera along with few ptz cameras but primarily as i said this was all related to traffic so it includes all your traffic violation detections running on these cameras be it your no helmet detection to triple riding to wrong direction to red light violation automatic number recognition speed violation detection all these cameras more than 700 uh, npr cameras have been installed few critical sites where speed violation detection cameras have been installed obviously coupled with bigger junctions where even the ptz cameras have been installed this is the command and control center of noida along with few installation locations 
and Mike recently visited this command center and he was pretty happy to see this installation. Again, as, as we said, enhanced traffic signal efficiency, reducing the delay, reducing the, optimizing the international cycle, uh, cycle times of the things because these cameras can detect the traffic flow and accordingly turn on the signals, red or green, according to the traffic flow. So thereby uh, optimizing the tra uh, cycle time of the traffic signal, plus reducing the offenses. And as Mike was using the word, it effectively works as a deterrent also. It is not only that penalizing somebody, but once people know that most of the junctions are already covered with cameras, automatically the violations go down. And that's what has happened in last two years in Noida as well. Moving on to from cities over the north to one city in south of India, we are again primarily this project, the project in which northern cameras have been installed was a traffic, so traffic related project. And today, in fact, I myself recently visited Trivandrum and we could see these cameras covering the Pan City. I was there last week. So, uh, Trivanantapuram or Trivandrum as it is known as was also part of those 100 smart cities selected by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs Government of India. Again in this advanced surveillance equipment at all traffic junctions, most of the large traffic junctions I would say with PDZ, RLVD, ANPR and speed violation detection have been installed. The requirements were again for uh, the name itself suggests the advanced traffic management system. The requirements were primarily related to traffic, again, to reduce the violations, automize the whole challenge generation. So that's where it has been done. The challenges, again, were deciding which locations, because Pan City plus the kind of uh, cameras which needs to be given because it is a coastal area, which can, which should be able to withstand that kind of a environment sorry here we have used all the box cameras in fact for 54 junctions in all where 54 uh, rlvd box cameras and more than 300 plus npr cameras have been installed and at few locations the speed detection cameras have been installed already and few more are increasing now the totally about 700 cameras have been installed. When I say 54 junctions, not 54 cameras. And some key locations like uh, assembly and secretariat and all those things there, even the face recognition cameras have been installed where they have created a white list and a black list so that they can get the alerts according to the uh, uploaded list if they see any suspect around. So these are few of the installations and this is a picture of the installations. If you could see in the picture, all these are box cameras which, are, which have been installed on the junction. Primarily all as we were again saying in the beginning, this is advanced traffic management system. The whole objective was to reduce uh, the traffic jams, efficiently manage the traffic signals, reduce the violations, act as a deterrent, and also uh, generate the challenge electronically without any manual uh, intervention if there is a violation. So these are few of the large installations in the smart city, safe city area, which we have done in recent past. And with this, I would like to thank you all of you for being patient and hearing to us. And I would move on to the question and answer session. If you have any questions, you could ask us. And a few questions have been asked, which in any case, my colleague Sumit would handle those questions. Thank you very much. Over to Sumit. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening to all. Good afternoon to all. If you have any uh, questions,
question and uh, uh, QA session, or you have any queries or any something you want to discuss about the Northern solution, Northern products, you can you can uh, put up in the chat box. Hello, Sumit. Yeah. So we have three questions being asked uh, in the chat box about our products and solutions. So I will just go through it. Uh, there's one question asking about in a single screen, how many vehicles can be detected? Uh, it's uh, normally in, for the ANPR or number plate recognition system, we normally use to cover the 3.5 meter width of the lane. So normally you can say like two or three, but we have some cameras where we can have the three or four lane coverage also. So yes, we can have like uh, five to six vehicles at a time we can uh, capture for the number plate recognition. And for the identification of vehicles, yes, number of vehicles like 10, 12 or 15 numbers also we can do. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, well, uh, the other question is asking about uh, what is the maximum speed limit that the camera can detect? Uh, it's about 200 km per hour. Oh, that's great. Well, the third question is asking about can the camera recognize the iron based number plates? Iran based number uh, plates, sorry. Can you, uh, like, can you please repeat? Iran based number plates means like, you know, suppose every different countries have a different uh, varieties of number plates. Whether yes, yes, plate. yes. So uh, we, some countries we ha have already uh, uh, have the capability to detect the number plates. But yes, for the new countries, we required some uh, two or three hours or four hours screen and our software can train on those number plates and we can achieve the accuracy more than like 92 or 95 percent in daytime but that yes we need to train the number plates of that particular country for that we required some video screen to train our system of software well in respect like in fact uh, in respect of any algorithms any countries like you know we can utilize our uh, solutions in every place right yes that's great um, somebody has been asked about our cyber security certificate, like whether the Northern products and solutions have their cyber security certificate. Yeah, we 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 have uh, in uh, in some of our products we already done the uh, testing and we have the cert certificates of uh, based on Indian government's requirement. And uh, same way, yes, if any country required a specific certificate, we can go with that also because our most of the products are uh, safe and uh, are uh, compliant with the cyber security things. Uh, so uh, in fact, like, you know, wherever in which country, whichever countries require the cyber security certificates according to their compliances, we will be able to provide without any delay, right? Yeah, we can, we need to test and we, uh, based on the uh, country-based uh, compliance, we can change or we can, uh, uh, like, we can do the changes in our firmware and software also. Great. Uh, we have a one question asking about uh, can we integrate the third party cameras with our solutions? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, but for that camera, we have required that, that particular camera SDK or API uh, for the integration. And based on the integration, what type of integration they required, we can uh, maybe uh, it's a basic integration we can have through the API. But if a deep level, then yes, 100% we require the SDK. So what could be the accuracy, like if you are actually uh, like, you know, uh, integrating with the, the third party cameras or something? There is nothing, nothing, nothing on the accuracy because we are just taking the stream from, from the camera and remaining things are done by our software, algorithm, the detection of the vehicle, a number plate recognition, everything. All right. Uh, there is one question on the screen. Uh, possibly it will be visible, which is visible for you as well. What is the warranty durations for every uh, cameras or solutions we have provided? So uh, by default, in some of the products, we have two years. In some of the products, we have one year. But based on the project requirement, we can increase our warranty. 100% uh, commercial implication will be there. Great. So we have a question uh, for this fourth speed detection, which camera is required? For? Sport. Sport speed is sport. Detection. Yeah. Okay. 
so uh, that is normally we normally prefer to have the 5 to 50 mm lens camera either in box type or in bullet type great and we do have one question on the screen what price range are we looking for the cameras can modern cameras compete with chinese camera on price uh we uh, are never uh, counting modern uh, in comparable to any chinese vendor so please do not expect any uh, price which we like if you asking the chinese cameras equivalent we cannot because the quality and the deliverable whatever we are uh, providing it's high on the accuracy and high on the quality as compared to chinese vendors so the next question which we have is like you know about uh, the unique features we have developed or any customization possible in our solutions or software which we are providing yes possible based on the project requirement and the volume because commercial aspect we need to check okay so in your example you said so far you have provided a uh, mile site why not be a mas expert what so, uh, uh, sorry so this is a uh, i would come here first of all it is not mile site it, it was milestone all right okay milestone is a third party vms application which the customer was already using or it was the preference so it is not really that we thrust upon the whole solution to the customer because in other smart cities in india it is probably a different thing okay it could have been vms expert also it, what i was trying to put across the message is it is not really bound a customer doesn't get bounded to buy my product with overall solution from me we are our cameras are third party software compatible our software is a third party camera compatible that was the message which i was trying to pass on thank you mr prashant uh there is a question on uh, the cameras are uh, onv if compatible yes uh, our cameras are on with compatible most of the camera supports profile s g and t and some of the cameras are supporting profile m also so that uh, that's all the questions that we have received till now does anybody else have any more questions our uh, qnr session is still going on i could see someone is typing let's see how uh, what is what could be the question oh he would like to know something uh, on the cyber security aspect so yes uh, as uh, i have already uh, replied on the last question we have some certificate uh, based on the indian government requirement on the cyber security uh, on some of our models and same we can have in other things also so other uh, reason why also we can pick yeah. in fact in short like you know we are compatible with the cyber security uh, law of every country is like wherever it is required we will follow and we will provide as well as it required right yeah yeah currently we have already done the testing for certain from a certain approved lab yeah in india however the same cyber uh, because different countries may have different cyber security laws so if if required in another country we can go through that particular process also that's perfect so what is the audio pick up range for the cameras that support audio uh it will be like around 4 uh, or 5 meter uh, with noise cancellation feature built in uh, in the built in mic great so this is uh, do you have any fishai cameras if yes, yes we have a fishai camera yeah we, we have the fishai camera with single lens also and multi lens also but normally fishai we normally prefer uh, uh, it's a single lens Yes, for multi lens, we can say multi sensor cameras. Right, great. So I hope, uh, yeah, some more questions are coming. Let's wait for a few more questions. Okay, I think uh, that's all from the Q and A session. Thank you, Mr. Sumit. Yeah.
Thank you, Malu. Thank you for the band and stay out. Thank you, Mr. Sumit. So, audience, if you have any further questions or if there is something you would like to delve deeper into, simply send your questions to our email at business at nordincommunication.com. So, we will also put it in our chat box also. As we come to the end of a webinar, I want to express my gratitude to our wonderful speakers, Mr. Mike Lewis and Mr. Prashant Abroad for sharing their expertise with us. Lovely. Right. right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>